Hi everyone, this is Hardy. So far we've gone over principles and theories about machine design. So over the next few lectures we'll learn some specific techniques for rendering cool looking machinery, actually making the marks that will be our machine painting. This is a set of tools and techniques that will work for just about any machine painting you might be hired to do, so I hope you find these lessons valuable. As I mentioned earlier, machine painting can kind of be an intimidating challenge. It all seems so detailed and technical. After all, the stuff we're drawing has perfectly straight lines, curves, and repeated elements. Parts and components manufactured with mechanical precision. How are we ever supposed to draw these shapes with only our steady hand? Well, fortunately, the digital medium makes this much, much easier. Straight lines, geometric shapes, and repeating identical objects, which are very difficult to render with pen and paper, become a breeze with Photoshop tools. And I'll show you how to effortlessly incorporate them into your workflow with a few fun and easy exercises. First, let's take a look at lines and shapes. This first exercise will show you how we can make perfectly straight lines and geometric shapes with Photoshop tools. Let's go over this worksheet and recreate all of these items. First, let's make some perfectly straight horizontal lines. With the brush tool, you can make perfectly horizontal lines simply by holding down the shift key. Once the line is finished, just let go and then you can start a new one with the same technique. This is a great way to make perfectly parallel lines as often occur in machines. This works with any line thickness or any brush tip shape. Also note that we can simply copy these lines if we need to, to create two perfectly parallel lines. Just select the lines you want to copy, hold down Alt and Shift, and then move them down with the Move tool. Photoshop will automatically make a copy, a super handy keyboard shortcut. Next, let's check out a really cool way to make polygon shapes with a technique known as shift clicking. First of all, we'll need to disable shape dynamics from our brush editor so that we have a uniform line thickness. To do that, just hit F5 and bring up the brush editor. We'll then uncheck the shape dynamics box. This takes away the pin pressure sensitivity, so be sure to turn this back on before you resume normal painting. To shift click, tap down the stylus in a starting point and it will make a solid dot. Then simply hold down shift and you can make straight lines from one point to another. Use this technique to go all the way around the shapes you want to create and you'll always have straight lines. This can be really handy if you have a large mechanical panel to render. One more line technique I want to show you involves the clone stamp tool. Let's make some simple lines using shift clicking like we just did. Now let's hit S on our keyboard to bring up the clone stamp tool. Hold down Alt to sample an area we'd like to copy and then simply paint in a perfect copy of the line. You can do this as much as needed to achieve the desired effect. This tool has all kinds of great applications in machine painting. Anytime when you have a repeating element, the clone stamp is your best friend. Okay, now let's shift gears to some shape creation. Now these look kind of like bad abstract art in this worksheet, and you may be wondering what use these are in actual machine painting. Well, most of the time we use these shapes is when we need to make a selection to paint within. Remember that any time you command click on a layer in that layer window, it creates a selection of all the pixels in that layer. That means that any shape we create on a layer can later be used as a selection to paint within. I'll show you what I mean when we get to our super cool projects later on. For now, let's check out how we can make these shapes. Let's start by using the pen tool, P, on your keyboard shortcut. The pen tool takes a little bit of getting used to. Tap and hold your stylus and you can manipulate these handles that appear to make any curve you want. Follow along the contours of this shape and you can see how you have total control over every curve. This vector tool precision is very useful when creating perfect machined curves. Also note that you can change to straight lines just by hitting Alt on any of your anchor points. Whenever we create a shape with a pen tool, it creates what is called a path. Paths are similar to layers and you can edit them in the Path tab next to the Layer tab. To turn any path into a selection, make sure that it is selected and then hit this dotted line icon at the bottom of the window. This turns your path into a selection. See the marching ants? Now we can fill this in just like we could with a marquee selection by hitting Option and Delete. 
One last thing to note on this shape is that we can create new selections within the shape and simply delete them out. This is how you put holes in shapes you might make. Remember, you can hold down shift to make multiple selections at a time. Hopefully you can now imagine the power and complexity of shapes you can create. Okay, for our last exercise on this sheet, let's check out how to make radially symmetrical objects. This is really useful when you want to create gears or saw blades or maybe windows. Anything with radial symmetry, that is, it's the same from the center point, can be created using simple Photoshop operations. With a little practice, this will become very easy, but describing it verbally will get kind of wordy and repetitive, so bear with me. It all starts with a simple shape. Choose this carefully since it will be repeated over and over. For our purpose, let's make a simple rectangle and skew it slightly by hitting Command T and then Control to bring up the other transform operations. I'll use Distort to give this shape a slight tilt. Okay, great. Now we've got our base shape on its own layer. Let's drag this layer down to the new layer icon which will make a copy. Now with the Move tool, let's move this copied shape down a bit. I'll then hit Command T to bring up Free Transform once again. I'll rotate this shape 180 degrees so it is the exact opposite of its copy on the top side. Next, let's hit Command E to merge these two shapes into one layer. After that, we'll copy this new merged layer. Hit Command T and hold down Shift to rotate this new copy 90 degrees. As you can see, it now becomes a simple process of copying, rotating, and then merging down. So let's merge down and copy once again. If you hold down Shift, it will keep the rotation at regular intervals. A few more copies later, and we filled in the entire circumference with radially symmetrical shapes. Cool! To finish this one off, let's make some simple circular shapes on the interior. Use the Circular Marquee tool and hold down Shift to make a perfect circle. Next, let's make another circle selection on the interior and delete it away. Finally, I'd like to show you how to put a stroke line around any selection. Let's make one more circle selection with the Marquee tool. Then we go to Edit and Stroke. This brings up a new dialog that gives us some options. You can pick any thickness, but let's stroke 11 pixels for this worksheet. Well, there we go. I hope you can see the possibilities here. Give this worksheet a try and your machine projects will have a very solid line and shape foundation.